Fated to be loved by Verlin's chapter conversation the situation was resolved far more quickly than I thought, anyway, since the central figure of the incident, the Pope, had chosen not to make a big deal out of it, it would be difficult for others to interfere or complain as well. Still, thanks to this incident, there will likely be more factions interested in getting involved with you. Utterlant stated her concerns while sighing, from now on, the Empire and the Tribal Alliance will become more active in regards to observing you. It would be wise to steal your heart and prepare yourself in advance. You don't need to tell me that, headmistress, this outcome is inevitable anyway, if I were to progress further into the main scenario. It have to face those clakers whether I liked it or not, if anything, it would be better for me to draw their attention sooner than later so that I could hold the initiative to set up the stage however I wanted, whether it was the tribal alliances war chiefs or the imperial family, various schemers would go all out to pursue their own interests, not to mention, even the holy land would be trying to get a piece of my ass, just by having the status where it be impossible for them to recklessly touch me. I could prevent most of their attempts to manipulate me. Well, this still wouldn't prevent all the troublesome issues coming my way later, though. More importantly, what happened to the matters regarding the sisters, anyway, anything related to my new status could wait until later, the most important part of chapter was still the sisters, in fact, the reason why I laid my hand on the holy land was partly because of them, the saintess still hasn't fully regained consciousness. But, there's nothing serious, she should wake up in a day or two, as for her younger sister, she's practically joined at the hip while nursing her, that's a relief, my brain was overheating as I tried to theorize the multitudes of scenarios that needed to be resolved. In that case, will they be prepared to follow the delegation's schedule? Uh, are you seriously saying that after I saved you even while getting reprimanded by the Pope, sorry headmistress, that's literally the most important part of my plan? so it can't be helped. I chucked at Atalant, who glared at me for acting so nonchalantly. In the Holy Land, delegations were regularly dispatched to thoroughly inspect and survey the entire region of Elfant while performing their blessings, and getting involved in this was the first step in breaking the curse of severance on Yuria's sword, as the event itself would become a trigger to treat her trauma. There's not much time left to had three days at most, considering how the Purifer boss battle went back in chapter, it would be better to always assume that shit would hit the fan, and the worst case scenario would happen, additionally, taking into account what would come days from now, it was correct to assume that the events surrounding the boy king boss battle would explode in chaos, in other words if I couldn't dissipate the curse of severance on Uria, it would be game over. When the saintess regains her consciousness, please send word that I'd like to see her. Well, he already cleared any bothersome conflicts with the Holy Land that could pose a threat on my plan. Uh, so, what remained was he should probably talk to them about their wish, to truly bestow salvation upon them. System notification the main quest has been completed. Echo of sanctification has been received. Seed of evil has been received. While looking at the windows that popped up, I stroked my chin with delight. I had already fulfilled the quest's clear conditions by rescuing Lucian earlier, but due to my various other tasks, I was only receiving the rewards now. Echo of Sanctification Type Growth Material Divinity Description When fused with items related to divinity, it can raise the item's grade by one level. I gazed at the blue gemstone in the palm of my hand, not too shabby, ain't it? Usually, the reward items for main quests varied depending on who was primarily involved in the quest. Anyone could see that the reward was clearly related to Lucian and Yuria, both of whom were obviously users of divine power, and luckily, I had an item that fit perfectly with this new reward, with a snort. I examined the palm-sized incense burner in my hand, most likely, in the original game, when the Divine's Ultima was upgraded. It would also enhance the embedded skills, penance, which can turn all additional stats into endurance, and guardian shield, which can summon a shield as tough uh, as one's endurance stat. Both were already useful in their current states, but considering the usual level of enhancement when consuming growth materials like the Echo of Sanctification, it was already a foregone conclusion that they would become much more powerful. It seems like the crafting department will have their work cut out for them. 
I would probably need to go to them sometime soon in order to request various tasks, so while I'm there, I might as well ask them to use this to enhance the Ultima, with that thought in mind, I swiped to the next window, aside from this, there was one more item I had acquired, seed of evil type, special currency, e. item grade, row description, can be exchanged for special skills in the point store, current amount owned, this, in addition to what I obtained from Ilaya and Talion, after clearing the main quest this time, the total quantity of seeds of evil that I owned was increased to, originally, I planned to use it for the Purifer boss battle, but because I couldn't find any suitable skill back then, I saved it instead, but now with of them, there was definitely a skill worth buying, for example scan type, special skill press, seeds of evil, description, once a day, you can check a target's information, something like this, skill store special skill, scan purchased. Starting today, you can check a target's information once a day, since the seeds of evil themselves were rare items that would only appear as gifts or rewards from main quests, this skill, which ate up a whopping four of them, was an incredibly powerful one despite its simplicity, after all, it was safe to say that there was never a situation where having more information could be considered a disadvantage, half doubt, and in perfect timing, an ideal test subject appeared before me. Or me. I gazed at Elena, who had noticed me from the end of the hallway and was now walking towards me with her usual expressionless face, system notification using scan, gathering information on the target, a how cooldown applies before Reese is available on the same target, first and foremost, Obtaining information about this person was my top priority, whether it was Elena or Ilaya, my future course of action would change drastically depending on their growth, after all, they were crucial characters in the scenario, Elena Elinalyz Le Tristan characteristic, Vessel Grey Devil, Status, Calculating the distance between Duke Tristan's headquarters and Marquis Campbell's headquarters to push away Drosinus, Special Notes, currently tailing someone for hours according to Dowd Campbell's orders, extremely tired but feeling better after just seeing Dowd Campbell, seeing that it could extract such detailed information, it certainly seemed like a skill that was worth seeds of evil however, what was most important was what was beneath it, status in for general strength, sigility, sendurance, luck, power, a special magic power, Blah power. F divine power. F. X misc. Current merge devil fragment amount. Stage merging progress. Corruption progress. As expected, setting aside the dazzling and eye catching stats, I glanced towards the phrases merging progress and corruption progress that were listed at the bottom. These were common elements that were indicated for all vessels of devils. How her merging progress is already at this was a measure of how much the devil fragment had begun to merge with the vessel. The most noticeable impact of this merge was the change in personality and abilities. It was similar to the case with Uriel, where her dependency and obsessive disorders were exacerbated under the influence of the white devil's fragment. It was clear that getting furious in the past, to the extent of awakening a divine skill, had a significant impact on the merging progress. When it reached, her personality would undergo a tremendous change, similar to how Yuria did, for now, it seemed to have only ended with the addition of the unidentified stat. At the very least, I hope Elena won't turn into another creep like Yuria with that, I focused on the other important part of the window, the corruption progress showed how poor the mental state of the vessel was, if this meter filled up, the fragments within the vessel would flood their mind, making all hell break loose, even if there were only one of these fragments, it would cause a calamity, but if all the fragments congested together well it would be game fing over no matter what, isn't that bad for now, usually, at the beginning of chapter, Elena's corruption would already have progressed by at least, however, thanks to me, Elia and Gideon, who were her biggest causes of stress, didn't focus their attention on her, anymore, while I was engrossed in my monologue, 
Alina finally approached me, looking as if she wanted to talk with me. I feel like dying. What the fuck? Aren't you at right now? Could you not say something that should only be said when your corruption progress is? But, why? The one you told me to tell that person is definitely not a normal human being. Elena flipped her hair as she let out a deep sigh. Hearing something like that coming out of her mouth felt jarring somehow, but considering who she was talking about, it was completely understandable, still. I managed to roughly deduce their behavioral patterns. Yep, I should've known that was why it felt jarring when you brought up depressing shit like that all out of a sudden, Elinorily. I asked with widened eyes. Alina handed me a bundle of papers. On it were detailed records of what a certain individual did and where they were inside the academy during the midterm exams, where she actually pulled it off. I knew I was the one who asked her to do it, but I thought it was a task that was nearly impossible to achieve. What can I say? As expected of the final boss, I guess. As I was admiring her night omnipotence, she held her waist with both hands and pushed her chest forward. She let out a fake cough. All of these actions, with the same emotionless expression, you could be a bit more thankful to me suddenly. I grabbed Elena and pulled her into my embrace, hugging her tightly. It was an unintentional action driven by the sudden burst of joy I felt. You worked so hard, Elena, really, truly, thank you so much, he'll make sure to repay you later. I left Elena frozen in the same pose, as I rushed away in quick strides. After all, I had to meet the individual who was the target of this information right away. Elena silently looked down at her uniform, with an expressionless face. She removed her outerwear and neatly folded it, draping it over her arm. I should store this somewhere safe. Hannah, hey, at the very least, she had no intention of washing it for as long as possible, while having such inexplicable thoughts. She suddenly recalled Dowd's hands that pulled her into his embrace just moments ago. They were bigger than expected now. In that case, it might be better to make the size of the ring that's being crafted just a tad larger, when he receives it. What kind of expression will he make surprised? Pleased. Or perhaps she'll immediately give his consent. Let's not have unnecessary expectations, while muttering to herself. She resumed walking with determined steps, however the corners of her mouth were tilted ever so slightly, a sign that she could not hide her anticipation, no matter how hard she tried. One common misconception held by those who have witnessed the future becoming the past an uncountable number of times was the belief that such a person would not value time at all. That misconception couldn't be further from the truth. Falkasis was someone who understood better than anyone else how precious the present time was. His hobby of appreciating landscapes was a testament to such a philosophy. The Academy's clock tower, when one sat inside this towering structure that seemed to pierce the sky, they could see the sun passing beyond the heavens better than anywhere else in this world. As the sunlight vanished and darkness gradually crept in, the appearance of his arm, positioned in a place where the light did not reach, changed. That wasn't the right word to describe it, as it was more so that it revealed its essence, the contours of his arm melted down, and transformed within the darkness, emitting a venomous aura, this was the price that he had to pay for carrying the weight of immortality. The shackles imposed upon him by the natural laws of the world, for a moment, he gazed at this phenomenon, before chuckling and stroking it, I suggest you go to the gem once in a while, and just as those ominous words ended, Someone ascended to the top of the clock tower, panting heavily in exhaustion. Any healthy Elfent student could get to where he was as long as they put in a little effort, but this particular student was so drained out of his stamina, as if he had traversed through life and death just to come here. Seeing his swollen eyes and heavy breath, it wouldn't be surprising if Falkasis were to mock said student, but instead, he addressed him with respect. You are Dowd Campbell, am I wrong? Do you have known? Take a seat first, try to catch your breath. With that, Falkasis gestured towards the seat with his gaze, while staggering. Dowd took a seat next to him and finally spoke after gasping to catch his breath for a while. How do you know me? The prophet went to great lengths to give information about you, so how could I not know? It was mentioned that you'd be the biggest obstacle to the task I must complete. I see, Dowd nodded slowly, as he responded curtly, in his mind. 
he was recalling all the information he knew about the individual sitting before him, the boy king. In the backdrop of chapter, as for the reason why he was called backdrop instead of the final boss was because he wasn't someone that can be beaten in combat, the king of the ruined, who had laid at rest for thousands of years, rather than a human, his monstrous existence was far closer to a phenomenon or concept, a ruler who willingly took on the most terrible form, as a price for a simple and warm wish that all his subjects would remain happy for a long time, such a person would cause a catastrophe here, considering the main scenario, Dowd already knew the answer he'd give to his question, nevertheless, he still prayed that the boy king wouldn't give out the absurd answer that he expected, are you planning to kill everyone here resurrect them, and turn them into the ruined for you to rule over, Falkasus nodded solemnly, the subsequent words rang out with such a simple and nonchalant tone, three days from now, Dowd let out a heavy sigh, 